всички. Пакетът чиста енергия за всички. И бързам да дам думата на комисията. Комисар Еке Шевкович, имате думата. Благодаря, госпожа председател. I was always telling you about our plans, objectives, and our future path for creating the energy union, one which serves the Europe citizens, boosts our industries, and preserves our environment. But at this point in time, as we are meeting in December 2016, I would like to say to you that our internal work in the Commission is now almost entirely complete. We have presented to you over the past two years the strategy the legislation and the enabling, uh, enabling environment for turning the energy union from the catchy buzzword to the reality we live in. With last week's package, we are at 90% done with what we have uh, promised. And now uh, we very much need uh, the honorable members, the European Parliament, to make sure that uh, energy unit, union would become also the legal reality. We need to work together to make sure that we would uh, start as silly as possible the co-legislative uh, process. Of course, the last week's package uh, was a uh, uh, rather uh, big one. It has eight legislative proposals and some important political uh, communications and reports. So I would just focus on the three main goals. How to put energy efficiency first how to achieve the global leadership in renewables, and what we can do to provide a really fair deal for our consumers. As you would uh, have already noticed, this package is bound to have a huge impact on jobs and growth. It could generate around 1% of increase in the GDP in the next 10 years. It could uh, spur investment of 177 billion euros, and it would directly improve the life and quality of our citizens. On this latter aspect, it was very important for us to have a particular social component in the package, namely for those who have difficulties to pay the energy bills and uh, uh, to make sure that the transition uh, we are starting would be the transition which we can call socially fair. As you would imagine, because of the time constraints, I will not be able to go uh, into the details of the overall package, so I would just focus on some elements of uh, the new governance systems we are proposing. When we discussed it the last time on the December 15, you've been very much inviting the Commission to present a legislative uh, proposal on the governance. We listened very carefully to you and we proposed uh, such a proposal. It serves three objectives. First, it streamlines the different planning and reporting obligations. And uh, we are making uh, sure that uh, we would uh, really uh, get rid of overlapping uh, reporting obligations, that we would uh, align the reporting uh, in terms of frequency and uh, timing. And I believe that uh, what we are putting on the table it, uh, uh, is in full accordance uh, with the reporting and planning uh, of uh, the Paris uh, Agreement. So it would allow us to continue to play the real leading role in the Paris Agreement implementation. Secondly, we've been very much calling up on increased transparency and more predictability, which we uh, introduce into the system as well, because we see them as the two essential preconditions to attract the investment uh, needed to fundamentally transform and modernize our economies. And thirdly, we are proposing a mechanism that is solid and robust so we can collectively reach all the energy union's objective, in particular the 2030 targets, and, will, and uh, to put Europe firmly on the road to low carbon economy and society. How we want to achieve it, the key instrument would be the national energy and climate plans, plans that have long-term perspective of 2030 or even 2050, the plans which would cover all five dimensions of energy union and which would be the result of the consultations with other neighboring uh, member states because we know how important the regional cooperation in this uh, aspect uh, uh, would be. We would like to make sure that uh, the work on these plans would start swiftly because we would like to see the final form by beginning of uh, 2019 and this would be uh, an important goal of my second energy union tour, which I would like to start in February next year, and where I hope some of you, as we did it the last time, could uh, uh, join me. 
Then we would have the system of uh, biannual reports, and every year we would issue also a report on the energy union, where we would analyze the overall situation in Europe and where we would also, if needed, issue necessary uh, recommendations. And I see that uh, time is uh, flying, therefore I would like also, uh, Madam President, uh, um, to pass the floor, if you allow, also to the Commissioner Arias Cañete, so he can go more into the detail to the concrete legislative proposals. And now I will give the floor to Commissioner Arias Cañete. The floor is yours. Thank you, Madam President. As explained by Vice President Sekovic, the main building blocks of the legislative proposals cover energy efficiency, renewable energy, the design of the electricity market, and governance rules for the energy union. Let me start with energy efficiency first. We are proposing, as we promised, an European Union binding target of 30% for 2030, up from the current target of at least 27%. A 30% target is the most cost-effective option by 2030. It will create about 400,000 more new jobs, reduce gas imports by 12%, and save 70 billion euros in fossil fuel import bills. For buildings, a sector which accounts for 40% of Europe's energy consumption, to speed up the renovation rate and promote the use of innovative and smart technologies. This will boost activity and revive employment in the construction and engineering sectors. As an example of concrete measures, we propose to prolong the savings obligations to contribute to the energy efficiency target, to deploy about 5 million electric vehicle recharging points, to encourage greater use of renewable energy in buildings, which is currently just 16 percent. With this set of measures, our proposal will speed up investment in the renovation of buildings, create a building renovation market with a value between 80 and 120 billion euros in 2030, and lower energy bills for consumers and take up to 3.2 million households out of energy poverty. Last but not least, for products, the Commission adopted a new eco-design work plan. On renewable energy, our, main, our aim is to be world leaders, maximizing the use of renewable energy in buildings, transport and industry. Our new rules will ensure reaching the renewable energy target of at least 27 per cent by 2030. Uh, First, we are putting the investment framework right by consolidating the, in European Union legislation several core principles for support to renewable energy. We move away from national schemes and propose a progressive Europeanization through cross-border opening of support. We want to put an end to reattractive changes in support and we call for simplified administrative procedures to get the projects up and running. Second, we propose measures for sectors which have the highest potential for the deployment of renewable energy, transport, heating and cooling, and electricity. In transport, the proposed measure will boost the use of advanced biofuels, electricity, and renewable synthetic fuels. We have proposed an ambitious mandate of 6.8% by 2030, with a strong component of 3.6% of advanced biofuels. On bioenergy in particular, after many years of uncertainty, we are introducing a strengthened sustainability criteria for biomass. Also, in line with our early positions, we propose to progressively reduce the contribution of food-based biofuels to meet the European Union renewable target from 7% in 2021 to 3.8% by 2030. This is both realistic and proportionate. The Renewable Directive also includes a number of options for Member States to increase their share of renewable energy in heating and cooling supply by one percent point per year until 2030. Furthermore, our proposals opens access rights to local district heating and cooling systems for producers of renewables heating and cooling and waste on an industry and third parties acting on their behalf. This takes me to the third area, renewable electricity. Our at least 27 percent target also means a 50 percent of renewables in our electricity mix. Here, the proposed renewable directive and the new market design proposals work hand in hand. We are overhauling the electricity market, and we do so mainly in two ways. First, by changing the rules of the market. The new market rules will promote a more flexible market. Sharper price signals will prompt investment in demand response, storage, and quickly reacting generation. Our proposals will make trading easier by better integrating short-term markets. Second, by fostering regional cooperation. We will create regional operational centers where transmission system operators will cooperate to ensure optimal use of the European electricity grid and better security of supply. And we will set up an European-wide DSO entity 
to coordinate the operation and planning of the transmission and distribution networks. Third, by giving a European dimension to security of supply. We will develop common rules on crisis prevention and tools to ensure cross-border cooperation to affront new security of supply threats like cyber attacks. And we will establish a common framework for capacity remuneration mechanisms. This framework will build on a wider European adequacy assessment. All available capacities, including in neighboring states, will be taken into account. And this will make sure that the right amount of capacity is identified. And we provide rules, rules to ensure cross-border participation. And this is a big step change compared to today, and this will keep costs to consumers to a minimum and present the functioning of the internal market. But I want to be very clear on one more point. Capacity mechanisms will not be used as a backdoor subsidy of high polluting fossil fuels. That will go against our climate objectives. That is why we have set a limit of 550 grams of carbon dioxide per kilowatt hour for new plants and existing capacity mechanisms also have to adapt to the new rules in due time. In all of this, our European Union Agency for the Cooperation of Energy Regulators, Asia, will ensure the proper regulatory oversight. We propose, therefore, to reinforce Asia's powers to go up to this task. Finally, allow me to underline one of the essential elements of the package, which is putting consumers at the centre. The new rules will enable them not only to be more informed or chain providers more easily, but to be able to, if they want, produce their own renewable electricity and to be paid for electricity they fit into the green. And in that case, the contribution to the grid cost will be fair and cost-reflective while continuing benefit, benefiting from facilitated access to the market, the so-called priority dispatch. Honourable members, I expect this complete set of proposals will be adopted by the co-legislators as swiftly as possible. Thank you very much. Thanks. And now we will go to speaking list, and Mr. Karins is the first one. The floor is yours. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, Mr. Commissioners, this initiative from the European Commission might be one of the most significant political initiatives in the last 10 years. We cannot underestimate its importance. Namely, what has been the driving force of our energy policy for the last 15, maybe even 20 years? This has been the climate policy with the overarching objective of reducing pollutants like CO2 or reducing climate change, mitigating it. So thanks to this policy, we have subsidized the renewable energies and these technologies have been developed so that we have uh, wind generators and uh, uh, other renewable alternatives to fossil fuels. With this initiative, we are establishing a new principle that could be called uh, a price competition element. So we will be thinking about how to ensure for the consumers and the industry the right prices. And the way we are doing it is by having more competition in the market. So let the market uh, uh, identify what capacities are needed where. We know that subsidies have been needed so far, but looking into the future, we need to see where we need to step back from this approach and let the markets take over what the subsidies have started. Thank you. Thanks. And next one, Mrs. Van Premt. Thank you, well, Voorzitter. Um, Thank you, well. Thank you very much. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you for being here today, but also uh, for the timely delivery of the package and uh, sending that to the Parliament. It's a huge package, and legislative and non-legislative measures, and I can uh, uh, assure you that our group is uh, ready to work together with the other groups to make sure that this gets through the Parliament quickly. I think that it is a very good basis for our discussions, but, and I mean there's always a but, we would uh, like to set the bar a little bit higher. We're, we've just had the Paris Agreement, and for us COP21 is the umbrella agreement, the agreement which all of the other agreements have to uh, fall under 
And so for that reason, we think the level of ambition is a little bit too low. Uh, we think it's good to have the binding energy uh, targets. Uh, we think it's what well, but uh, you know that uh, the Parliament's objective uh, was 40% and we think that is something which is achievable and uh, which is also good for energy poverty in Europe. And I'll be coming back to that in a moment. Secondly, on renewable energy, well, that is good, but not good enough because the uh, ambition of having uh, from each member state, I mean, we, we think that we can have a better targets uh, for new new rules uh, and then uh, the there's no point in in investing in uh, uh, renewable energies and then uh, focusing on uh, fossil fuels as well now uh, our group uh, provides a great support uh, for the um, initiatives on energy poverty. This is a huge uh, challenge, and so we're ready uh, to work together on with you on this, and we're hoping that we will have a very good cooperation so that we can get this through the Parliament and uh, get to work. Thank you. Mr. Krasnodamski. Thank you very much, uh, President. The uh, package presented by the Commission is, uh, is very broad, hundreds of pages, many uh, legislative projects, so there is a lot of work ahead of us. But this also means we should not be working under pressure. Uh, we should strive to abide by the treaty-based division of competence. Uh, between member states and EU institutions. The EU member states have the right to set their own uh, uh, targets as regards, for instance, decarbonisation. Also, we must remember uh, and uh, maintain a balance between climate protection and energy security. Some proposals here are doubtful. Uh, there are some contradictions between uh, another great energy independence of the EU and uh, uh, the Commission's proposal for uh, uh, power centres uh, in uh, member states. This in practice means that only uh, gas-powered plants will be used in order to create such uh, power centres in member states. Also, we have problems with uh, a greater use uh, of uh, uh, renewable energy. Another problematic thing is the uh, uh, financial platform centrally managed by the Commission. Also, another, another doubt is uh, legally binding objectives uh, set at the level of 30 percent, which is in uh, contradiction of uh, the decisions of the Climate Summit in 2013. But we will work on it all, and I hope we will manage to find a compromise. Thanks. And now I will give you the to Ledamot Federley. Thank you, Chair, and thank you to the Commissioner for the presentation of this proposal. It's uh, one of the best pieces of legislation we've had uh, on energy in the history of the Union, and it needs to meet our geostrategic aims and ensure that industry and consumers can uh, get appropriate supplies of energy. Heating in winter and so on. And this package also helps with the major climate change uh, challenges that we're facing. And the ETS shouldn't be forgotten either. And let's recall that there that uh, uh, renewables are also very important and are uh, subsidised. There have been other uh, sectors that have been subsidised in the past, coal and so on. Uh, there are re innovative uh, projects for gas and we hope that this uh, project will fulfill its uh, 
target in the market. Energy intensive industries also need an appropriate framework to work in and this uh, will help the uh, energy markets to work in general. Thank you very much indeed. Well, um, we are not going to support a, uh, an energy package which focuses clearly on the needs of the market and the interests of monopolies and uh, multinationals as well. Uh, basically, the suppliers on the electricity market will have the right basically to set very high prices. And uh, basically, um, there are going to be excessive powers uh, available uh, in the uh, hands of these big groups. Now, in respect of uh, energy um, supply, well, we've seen a 30% increase in provision by 2030, and this is backtracking, I would say, largely on the 40% requested by the Parliament. And uh, we have to look at the question of renewables. Um, we should be looking for a higher percentage there. Also, the um, fair access for renewables and equal access to uh, the market for renewables doesn't seem to be respected either. We're going to see energy poverty increasing and uh, we're not going to see a clear plan of action to combat this. We really should be looking at um, putting an end to the energy uh, isolation of certain member states in the European Union. We also need a, a comprehensive approach to climate change. So once again, we think that the environment has been sacrificed, uh, as have the uh, energy requirements of our people, uh, in order to serve market needs and the needs of these major companies. Thank you. Monsieur Tourmes. Thank you very much. Uh, you will allow me to thank Mr. Juncker for having stuck to the 30% energy efficiency you promised us, Mr. Savkovic for promoting energy citizens, Mr. Kaneta for banning new coal, Mr. Timmermans for recognizing that eco-design is a big measure for Europe, Mr. Katainen for all the work he does on improving financing around energy efficiency, and Mr. Muedas for preparing the energy business in Europe for disruptive change. But, and of course there's good elements in this package, but there is a lack of vision. Why do you call this package clean energy? Why don't you call it green energy? Why? Because the future can only be renewables. Look at the costs. And 50% renewable electricity in 2030 with full electrification of our transport and bringing more heat, electricity, that's too low. Sorry. Get up your numbers. And if there's one thing which is unacceptable in this package, it's the non your costs on renewables. So how is it possible that Commission suggests that an offshore wind park costs 90 euro in 2050 when we have seen one last week with 49 in 2016? So you have to get to a reality check when it comes to the cost reductions of renewables and I'm sorry, you have to get to a reality check when it comes to ETS and how well or not well it functions. So this is not building trust. And the second thing is, this package is not building trust for the market. Yes, Christians, let the market take over, but not only for renewables. What is a market where coal pollution costs four euros per tonne? What is a market where German power companies have to pay for the decommissioning and where France is organizing a hundred billion plus tax subsidy for decommissioning? So I want the market to take over, but then it must be a market which is f fair for not only for renewables, but also it has to address coal and also uh, the nuclear costs. And it is not building trust with governments. <coughs> governments are not happy. Why? It's because you cannot force governments by forcing them to open their support schemes. That is not building trust. Forcing them or suggesting to split countries up in two or several zones. Forcing them
to open the cross-border lines without any security margins. That is not building trust. What we need to go beyond the borders. But therefore, we need concrete plans for the Baltic Sea. How do we link desynchronization, which is a political must, with offshore wind farms? For Southeast Europe, how do we reduce capital costs in the non-euro countries like Bulgaria, Romania, and help Greece? How do we get 100% renewable fast charging stations between Germany, France, Italy, Benelux? Concrete projects. Why don't we have a financing scheme to help citizens' cooperatives? So let's make concrete projects to bring this energy union closer to citizens and closer also to the governments. Thank you very much. Thanks. And now, Mr. Tamburrano. 100, 200, 300, 400, 500, 600. These 600 euros, my colleague, indeed, are buried on page 12 of Annex 2 of the Clean Energy for All communication. Now, it's true that inefficient fossil fuel subsidies are in the main text, but uh, in the, uh, as the last argument in the penultimate paragraph, just uh, with no figures attached either. I almost miss them, actually. Uh, I'd like to refer to the data from the IMF about direct and indirect subsidies in the war against fossil sources. In the year of our Lord 2015, they amounted to 300 billion euros per year. And the figures uh, you've put forward, I'm sure, have been given your own um, uh, assessment as well. Yes, there are 500 million citizens, and to be sure, the annual subsidy for everyone, babes in arms to the elderly, are uh, the equivalent of these 600 euros. It's a scandal in the face of which everything else passes into, pales into insignificance. It's a disgrace, 500 million times a disgrace. I uh, appreciate and welcome the work of those people who have drafted more than 4,000 pages of documents, very professional, precise and interconnected. But there's something massive missing in this. The uh, lethal, dirty fossil energy, which is uh, lethal in climate terms, health terms, near political terms, it shouldn't be subsidised more than what you yourself define clean. It's immoral, it's obscene, it's anachronistic, and uh, uh, it's a suicidal act. You know, uh, they, we are probably talking about stability, and we forget the universal uh, uh, budget law that has always governed the planet. And the uh, only eternal uh, rules of uh, thermodynamics and climate stability, like the rule of death to which we have to respond. Now, if we don't want to get rid of uh, fossil subsidies, at least uh, make sure that uh, uh, 300 uh, million go to green energy, green money for green energy. F let's uh, uh, stop playing with us, get rid of this tatty liberalism, and let's get this uh, common house in order. Economia. Thank you, Frau Vos thank you very much, Chair. Uh, uh, thank you, Mr. Sechcevich. Thank you. Uh, can I say, following the Paris Agreement, uh, the uh, Commission presented uh, uh, an accelerated uh, plan in the summer, and it's a, a package. Clean energy for all, and you've uh, said that this has uh, dealt with 90% of what we have to do, and I'm sure that this will mean that the EU can play a leading role in a move towards clean energy systems. Uh, the package which has been presented has uh, three uh, main points, increased efficiency, well, the world markets, and uh, that there's supposed to be a specific focus on consumers. And uh, this provides opportunities for consumers because uh, they can uh, play a much more active role in energy markets. They have a broader range of suppliers. They have uh, better access to price comparison instruments. And uh, all of this will lead to a uh, reduction in prices in uh, electricity. Eco-design managers will lead uh, to energy saving uh, managers, uh, uh, by 2020, and uh, households will save uh, 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 huge amounts. But uh, uh, eco-design will also provide excellent opportunities uh, for uh, companies. 
And for industry, there are great opportunities because uh, clean energy uh, led to global uh, investment of uh, 300 billion at, at, in order to achieve uh, the 2020 objectives, uh, particularly for the construction industry through changes to uh, guidelines for energy efficiency for uh, buildings and particularly uh, for important for SMEs. But perhaps I could just mention a few points of criticism because I think it is uh, better to strengthen the national regulators and create a network for them rather than uh, creating a European regulator. And also I'm against European fields and also uh, we need a clearer definition of the capacity mechanisms. And the next one, Mr. Balcho. Madam Chairman, thank you for the floor. Clean energy for Europeans. It's a lovely title, lovely targets, but we need to answer some questions. Is it realistic to generate a large percentage of energy from clean sources? What would the percentage be when you're talking about clean green energy? There are constraints and systemic limitations of technology and limits in terms of subsidies. Do we expect the same of all member states? We're talking about 9,000 megawatts total power in Hungary at the moment. After 2030, that total power will be 13,000. We wouldn't be able to think of producing most of that energy from clean sources. And we also need to be aware that uh, nuclear energy, from the point of view of climate change, is a clean energy, but nobody talks about it. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you very much. Uh, thank you to the Commissioner as well. It is true that energy policy and economic policy are uh, two sides of the same coin and have to be dealt with together. Uh, the package that you're proposing does uh, provide solutions to the huge challenges which face the European Union. And I think it should be an opportunity for us to develop the cleanest possible technologies. I'm uh, very interested by all of the announcements that you made, particularly on energy efficiency and also on eco-design. I think this is going to lead to a great deal of investment, create jobs and uh, lead to growth. But nevertheless, uh, with regard to energy efficiency, I think it is important to know what type of uh, financing will be able to provide for this. Renewables are important, but uh, it is important uh, to look at how uh, they interact with other sources of energy, whether we're talking about geothermal energy, uh, new or uh, uh, biogas produced through methanization. And uh, coal is not uh, the solution. Uh, quite the contrary. Gradually, it's going to have to be replaced possibly by gas uh, before we come uh, to more significant development of renewables. But in this area, we need research. That's something that we've all said. And I'm just wondering, because we have some pilot uh, projects uh, on capture, uh, carbon capture and storage, uh, uh, but uh, uh, there's uh, one in Norway, uh, otherwise they're mainly in uh, Europe. Uh, this is something which will happen at local level, lots of uh, networks that need to be interconnected, and all of this will create a, a better network right across the European Union. I am convinced uh, that the, uh, the energy union really is a strategic vector for the success of the European Union, and we will ha you will have our full support for that. Thank you, Madam President. Before I actually get into the nitty-gritty of this, I wanted to start by thanking the Commission and the Commissioners for the huge effort they've made with this legislative proposal. And this was announced some months ago. Since then, we have been monitoring closely as a group what's been happening. And today, this has become a detailed proposal for the uh, governments in respect of, of uh, energy challenges. So we took 
a positive approach to examining this. I accept the general thrust. We have to open up energy markets to the challenges of the modern age and we have to manage the big changes coming about, focus on clean energy at a competitive price. I think it's still very early to understand all the ins and outs of this package and I support what's been said by my colleague Van Bremt on this. Nonetheless, there are certain aspects which I think are very clear. Firstly, the Paris commitment to keeping global temperatures down, that forces all of us to do more than what is proposed right now. I'm thinking in particular about the renewable uh, sources targets and full integration of those renewable sources in the markets, also through uh, weighted uh, approach to uh, access. The package also gives us another message which shouldn't be underestimated. The Commission is proposing a, a too gradual decarbonisation course. We have to invent, come up with new ways of accelerating this process. The work put in over these months and years uh, have, uh, uh, you know, it's been done by Griffin, Langen, etc., and they say that uh, we can get much more advanced balances as well. Thank you. Thank you, Madam President, and thank you to the Commissioners for being with us here today. I welcome this clean energy for all package, and I'm, I'm glad it's called clean rather than green, because I want to concentrate on the word clean. I'm not talking about clean in terms of radical reductions in carbon, although I know that's the main focus for most people today, and that's very, very important. But I'm talking, as the recent rapporteur for the National Emissions Ceilings Directive, about being clean of pollutants other than carbon. That's uh, NOx, PM, etc. So I particularly welcome the focus of this package on consumers, which is important as it ultimately by adapting consumption patterns in energy and much more generally in the way we live, that we can truly transition to a clean, low energy uh, economy, low carbon rather, and low energy. I'd like to see very specific measures to tackle the problems associated with outdated carbon heavy district heating seams in some parts of the EU. And on the theme of changing consumption patterns, we must look at ways of dealing with the issue of individual household log burning currently being overlooked as a major health issue because of our focus on diesel transport. I know those are fairly minor issues this morning, but I think that they should be considered. And now, it's time for Herr Ledermann Petersen. Thank you, Chair. I would like to start by thanking the Commission for... I'd like to start by thanking the Commission for this uh, tsunami of legislation. I think this is perhaps uh, the most significant that we've had for decades. I think we now have a unique opportunity to ensure a, a shift uh, in Europe from black to green energy and to create hundreds of thousands of jobs to invest in research and development and, um, and make a huge contribution to uh, the global environment. And uh, the uh, package covers thousands of pages. The Commission has done its work and now we in the Parliament and uh, the Member States also have to be as ambitious as possible. Uh, this is a unique opportunity to uh, leave our mark on history and this will make Europe more secure, make uh, uh, Europe independent of Putin's gas and uh, the like. Uh, we need uh, green electricity and if we haven't got 100% uh, green uh, until we have that, that must remain our objective. And I think uh, we should be even more progressive, even more ambitious than the Commission. I think we should really set things in motion and I think uh, that means uh, that we have to say that the proposal is not radical enough. We should and can go further. We need to look at renewables, we need to look at uh, energy labels, and uh, we need to improve legislation to the benefit of all and to the benefit of the climate. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair, dear colleagues, dear Mr. Commissioners. This is one uh, legislative package uh, that came out of the Commission uh, over the last six months. 
uh, it is uh, to meant to change uh, the landscape of uh, European energy policy. But it must be put in context with other dossiers like ETS and so on. Uh, here we want to be more ambitious in terms of energy saving, but the ambition is not as high as we in the European Parliament expected. I think we will have to look at it once more, because it's still true that the best energy saving is the energy that we will not use at all. Uh, this is a chance to achieve big savings, big savings. Uh, but here's also the weakest point of the text. Uh, this new ambition fails to protect the weakest in the European Union. And we do not see any specific proposals about fighting the energy poverty. The new ambition will be costly and it will be probably charged to the uh, consumers. So there's a lot of work to do and we should come back to the roots. Energy is the right of every citizen and it must be affordable. Thank you. And now Mr. Helmer. Uh, Madam President, a recent study from the Westminster Parliament indicates that current green policies will cost UK energy users as much as £300 billion by 2030. This will do huge economic damage. Yet both the national grid and our energy regulator Ofgem are warning that over-reliance on intermittent renewables coupled with the closure of baseload capacity forced by the large combustion plant directive threaten power outages this winter. The national grid has responded by doing deals with the owners of diesel generators. Madam President, you couldn't make it up. We're going to save the planet and cut CO2 emissions by relying on diesel generators for backup. They are also looking at what they call demand management. I call it supply failure. That is getting factories to agree to close at peak demand times. Madam President, in medieval times, folk who could not afford candles went to bed at sunset. They ground their corn in windmills which stood idle uh, on calm days. By contrast, we are accustomed to secure supplies of energy available at the flick of a switch. But now these green policies threaten to send us back to the dark ages where our own power supplies are vulnerable to the vagaries of wind and weather with dire social and economic consequences. In my party, we demand secure and affordable energy for homes, for pensioners, for industry. We want an end to fuel poverty. For these reasons, we oppose the Commission's energy package and we oppose its obsession with renewable energy. Thanks. And now, Mr. Chokka. Thank you very much indeed, Madam President. Colleagues, in order to do something positive in these luxurious palaces, you know, we've got these billions of euros per year, and we should do something very straightforward, and that would be to listen and act according to what our citizens are asking for. And listening in order to act, you know, um, that should be what's happening. We've got this package, uh, it should be looking at young people, uh, companies, and the elderly. And we've seen that there is a need to reduce the cost of energy, the cry of pain for many families who cannot afford this basic uh, commodity, energy. There's a cry of pain coming from citizens who send these bills, 100 euros per month, just for light, electrical energy in other words. I mean, it's crazy. 100 euros per month for our families. 25 euros of that is to produce electrical energy. 25 euros to transport it. And 50 euros are the additional costs involved there. And if you then think as well that uh, uh, basically we also have to pay for the television in that, it's absolutely crazy. So we have to fight. We have to fight to avoid additional costs being uh, filtered into our electricity bills. Thank you. Uh, 
Well, there is co co competition uh, for energy. And uh, also there is uh, the uh, European Union and the governments who are uh, starting to express concern about uh, climate change. But clean energy and uh, green energy basically um, need to be based on uh, a clear investment, but uh, not the type of investment we're seeing now where uh, um, our peoples are having to fork out for this. Obviously, um, uh, we've seen from the series of government uh, in Greece, we are seeing the uh, energy poverty increasing. Now we've uh, seen the decisions taken in uh, Paris, but they haven't put an end to poverty, hunger, thirst, etc. And uh, we are seeing this system which is there for profit and it's killing people and our environment. Natural resources should be at the heart of this. And uh, only on that basis can we ensure clean, cheap energy for all and support the development of people and the environment. Next one, Mr. Busek. Dziękuję bardzo. Gratuluję Komisji Europejskiej. Well, thank you very much. Let me congratulate you, uh, dear commissioners responsible for our energy for this package. Your approach is exactly what we need. Uh, I mean, a whole package, a whole package including all the uh, relevant uh, elements that we need. And now we have 90% of the uh, uh, needed uh, legislative acts. Now, five remarks. The system of management of uh, our energy union includes a indicator of energy uh, import dependence. Good. This is what we wanted. Remark two. We have a common objective on the point uh, as regards uh, renew renewable energies, 20 percent until 2030. But here, maybe we should uh, do something in order to guarantee uh, energy uh, neutrality that we mentioned many times. Third remark, uh, we are to uh, be the guardians of this uh, neutrality, so emissions at 5,500 uh, grams uh, per one uh, kilowatt hour, uh, which is a, this is in contradiction of uh, item 194 of our treaty which stipulates that member states have the right to shape and set their own energy mix. Remark 4. The platform uh, for supporting of renewable energies. This uh, platform should uh, be in the main act and not in the delegating acts. And uh, my last remark, I welcome uh, the ambitious uh, uh, objective of 30% of renewable energies because we in the ITRA committee, we've always uh, been in favor of uh, energy uh, Effectiveness, thank you. Mrs. Werner. Frau Präsidentin. Chair, Commissioner, the Clean Energy for All package uh, is setting a good sign. The Commission is doing that. But nevertheless, I would just like to mention a few things which I think uh, the Commission hasn't sufficiently covered. A binding efficiency targets as called uh, for by the Parliament of 40% uh, uh, is achievable and uh, it needs to be broken down uh, for mem by member state. And the same goes for new renewables as well. Without any uh, additional measures, uh, we would get 24% uh, and so that is why I think uh, that the Commission's uh, target of 27% is too low. Uh, in ambitious targets lead to renovation and lead to increased is in jobs and growth and uh, they create new industrial jobs and it is important that we make uh, the energy system uh, ready for renewables uh, that increase access to renewables is provided. We need a assist uh, of uh, uh, support. We need to look at capacity mechanisms if they are to be there. They shouldn't be uh, a back door for uh, maintaining uh, outdated nuclear plants. And I think the Commission's approach is right, uh, putting consumers at the centre in the future. Uh, uh, consumers will be proactive and we need to focus on uh, um, less privileged people and look at how they have access to energy as well. Uh, if we uh, are effective, then citizens will realize this. And me, so we need to ensure that we have effective implementation of all of these measures. Thank you.
Next one, Mrs. Bosuit. Thank you very much, uh, Commissioner. I'm very happy uh, that I'm able to congratulate you today on the proposal that you're making. I think uh, that the Commission is stressing uh, that uh, the Commission sees the challenges. We do need to have ambitious targets, but we also need to remain uh, realistic. I think that if we aren't uh, uh, realistic, uh, we uh, miss the opportunity. I want to just uh, focus on two things. The focus on efficiency, I think it's quite right that that is in the center of the Commission's concerns. And uh, the, the uh, uh, com com uh, uh, Commission uh, talks about 27 uh, percent. Uh, we talked about 30. We think that uh, that is the right approach. Uh, but then there should be a re uh, revision. And then on uh, renewables, we think it is right that the Commission has a, a, a target here of 27 percent, and uh, the Commission has uh, said uh, that uh, uh, there's no point in having national targets uh, within a united market. And then uh, a new uh, structure for energy, we need to look at uh, outdated models, and I think uh, that the Commission hasn't gone quite far enough here. Uh, this winter package is about shaping the European energy policy for a decade to come and even longer. So this requires some forward thinking. The Commission got it right uh, in clearly stating in its proposals that we are moving away from the centralized generation uh, towards decentralized uh, production with renewables and technology at this core. But all of this uh, package needs to deliver on the statement and provide the right initiative. Uh, for the energy sector and consumers to move forward with this uh, change. And one key element is connectivity. Connectivity between countries, connectivity between smart buildings, appliances inside home and the grid, connectivity between car and home, connectivity to integrate more renewables to the grid. Uh, to deliver on connectivity, grids need to get smarter. And we do need smart meters, uh, which are, as one expert says, the brain uh, of the grids. So before we talk about more ambition uh, in our renewables policy, uh, we need to make sure that we do get these key principles right. Thank you. Thanks. And next one, Mr. Paksas. Madam Chairman, dear colleagues, uh, I indeed think that uh, uh, this clean energy package is a very good set of documents and uh, it will be properly implemented. Uh, renovation measures uh, for buildings can significantly reduce consumption. Therefore, renovation could be one of the emphasis in this package. The second uh, point is that uh, the EU must uh, speak uh, with one voice uh, regarding uh, energy security of each member state, including also uh, nuclear power production. Um, and in this package, I missed certain uh, attention uh, to uh, Belarusian new power plant which is being constructed at the very border of the European Union. Uh, needless uh, to repeat that uh, one radioactive cloud could uh, bury all uh, clean energy packages and all energy strategy of the European Union. So bearing in mind uh, various uh, reports about um, violations and uh, security breaches uh, in Astraf, I think that uh, our concern about uh, this particular object should be much higher. And thirdly, energy prices for home consumers or private households. Uh, we have uh, certain uh, areas in the EU where almost one third of all household income is uh, basically spent on energy prices. Uh, certain monopolies uh, dictate the prices and uh, uh, energy companies uh, generate huge profits uh, because of unfair policies. They Monsieur le Commissaire, qu'est-ce que c'est qu'une politique Une politique, c'est ce qui effectivement... Yes. What is a policy? It is something that demands will and do isn't based on 
the actions of the market. If we want to be ambitious about energy efficiency and new energies, the only possibility given the investments, the size of the investments that we need to go beyond the market to really have political will is to use quantitative easing in accordance with along with the bank to invest 500 billion into energy and new renewable energies if you want to do this this is what you need to do secondly you need to use the states the states investment bodies and national public bodies and that's not what you have done and you have destroyed the tools that we built after the second world war to create your to create an energy policy so we're we're installing energy uh, precarity thank you thank you very much president when i listened to you uh, commissioner Kanieta, i had the impression uh, sorry that I'm listening to a crazy man's nonsense. We don't talk about profit, which is the center of any economic activity. We're talking about some nebulous figures like 30%, 30%, 27%, some of that. I want to, I want to make you aware, Mr. Kanyeta, uh, I'm sure uh, you slept a lot in school. CO2 is uh, nothing uh, bad. It's very important for our plants. Our plants uh, make our uh, earth greener, and thanks to the CO2. This is uh, what I'm saying uh, uh, to our friends from the Greens. Now, most scientists are saying that a global warming, if it exists at all, has nothing to do with a man's activity. And I'm swearing on the uh, eyes of my children. I will not rest until I will put you all in prison, because your place, Mr. Kanyeta, is in prison and not there in that uh, chair. And also, I think the EU should be destroyed. Thank you. Next one, Mr. Bieber. Thank you very much indeed, Madam President. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, the Commission's proposals on future energy economy are, uh, are workable but demanding. And we've looked at the various different proposals and different legislation. Very often this goes hand in hand as well. And uh, also uh, this is expressed in uh, what member states are going to have to do in the future as well. But I continue to believe that the effect of this package on emissions trade hasn't been adequately taken into account. What about the provisions for renewables as well? What about energy saving and encouraging that? What about eco-design, labelling, uh, construction? How is all of this going to uh, affect the, the price of a certificate and on CO2 emissions? Ladies and gentlemen, we can't end up again in a situation where we have corrective mechanisms which uh, destabilize the markets. What we need is a comprehensive assessment of European and uh, and member state legislation which affect energy. And I also believe that uh, really um, this push to save energy is outdated already. Things are going to m moving much faster than we expect as well. There's a move to uh, electro mobility. We're going to need more electricity in the future than we have thus far. Yes, uh, it should be green, but the path to the green age shouldn't be hampered by this force to s forcing people to save. So yes, the package is okay, but we need to assess our behavior in uh, emissions trading and we need indicative trades, uh, targets for energy savings rather than forcing people's hand. Thank you. Thank you for the floor, uh, dear President, Mr. Commissioner. Uh, the energy package uh, should be a revolution in our energy policy, and I continue to believe that this could be the case, but the question is whether it will meet our expectations. The result will depend on uh, how we in the European Parliament will be able to adopt uh, the measures that we proposed uh, when we were approving the uh, Energy Efficiency Directive and uh, also within the framework of our uh, other reports. Um, somebody believes that uh, this package is overambitious or underambitious, but I think it is realistic. Let me focus on energy efficiency, which is for me the most important aspect for the future market. 
I don't think that uh, somebody would challenge uh, the importance of energy efficiency and uh, uh, decrease of our consumption that could improve our dependence on imports and this could also help uh, uh, households that are threaten threatened by poverty. Pani Dear uh, President, uh, uh, dear Commissioners, uh, the Winter Energy Package, uh, I think, is one of the most important and risky documents for future decades. Energy has become an inevitable part of our lives. Everybody needs to have light and heat for affordable prices, not distorted, not exorbitant due to political interests. I do agree with the text, but I think it is very problematic to set uh, binding targets uh, for energy uh, efficiency of 30 percent as an administrative decision, because if we are over ambitious, this could have an uh, uh, impact on uh, uh, ecology, on investment costs, and it could be counterproductive. I think that any uh, increase of 27 percent must be based on uh, an impact uh, study that would uh, uh, motivate this decision. Energy unit should uh, provide a new momentum for an open market with energy that would help competitiveness of member states and the industry. Thank you. And now Mr. Telitska. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, commissioners, uh, such a proposal always will uh, provoke uh, reactions uh, too ambitious, uh, lacking ambition and so on. What I'm lo uh, looking really forward to is uh, to see whether this is a complex proposal which will deal away with the distortions of the market and we will have an energy union and a functioning internal market. We always speak in favor of uh, completion of the internal market, but then with the proposals and uh, the deliberation of the parliament, we gradually dilute it. For me, the absolutely key issue is if a company will find it viable to invest on the energy market. That's, that's key. Once that will happen, we will have the functionality of the internal market. So issues uh, like the design of the energy market, issues uh, of uh, price zones, issues of capacity mechanisms, and so on, these have to be assessed in a complex way, and then we may, might find out that the target XY is ambitious or realistic or not, but as I say, the functionality is the absolutely key issue, and we will assess it on the basis of the impact assessments uh, for sure. Thank you. And now, Mr. Rubik. Thank you very much, President. Uh, Commissioner Kenyatti, I'd like to congratulate you on the clean energy package. I think it shows that the European Union is uh, uh, investing more in production. And I think uh, we should have a binding objective of 30% uh, for uh, uh, 2030 of investment in production because uh, we see that France is at 11 uh, percent and so this means that the clean energy package is a huge opportunity to create jobs uh, through investment and I think that the question of uh, uh, transport uh, is something that we could uh, deal with more effectively uh, with the 5G system and sensor uh, technology if we use 5G for t continuous driving. I came to the parliament today and sometimes you uh, are stuck for three minutes at a, a red light and uh, there you've got uh, trucks that are then accelerating and all of this is a huge challenge because that's creating large amounts of fine particles and, uh, and you also get rubber coming off the tires when people are braking, etc. And so I really think that you need to take a look at uh, continuous driving, making sure that people are driving at a constant speed. I think that will also uh, improve uh, life spans for batteries as well. Uh, also, we've got 140 uh, uh, million houses in uh, Europe that, uh, that need better uh, thermal protection insulation. We could create new jobs, and uh, all of this would be um, decreasing uh, the burden on household expenses while creating new jobs. Thank you. Rubik, are you ready to answer? Mr. Rubik. Yes, please, and 30 seconds. Thank you very much. In fact, I would like to ask Mr. Rubik, who is a specialist uh, on, uh, on energy, uh, don't you think so, Mr. Rubik, that we must raise the level of ambition for renewables and energy efficiency and develop further provisions on energy poverty whilst avoiding hidden subsidies for mature technologies. And now Mr. Rubich. Ja, recht herzlichen Dank. Yes, thank you very much for that question. 
I think uh, that we could solve the problem very easily just by facilitating investment, particularly investment uh, for consumers in uh, the uh, insulation of the housing stock, for instance, my proposal is that the emission uh, trading system uh, w would uh, be used uh, and made available to the European Investment Bank, and they would then be able to come up with an investment package which would make it possible to have this type of investment, and that would uh, uh, result in savings for households. Thank you very much for the question. Thanks. I want to inform you that I don't take any more blue cards because, because we have many speakers on the list still. And now, Mrs. Griffin. Thank you, President. Commissioners, just like the customs union and the single market, the government in the UK is being incredibly silent on the issue of the internal energy market. Today's clean energy package highlights that the EU is leading the way when it comes to promoting renewable energy, making our buildings more energy efficient, decarbonising our economy and fighting energy poverty. But I believe we can be more ambitious, especially in terms of energy efficiency. It is paramount that the UK remains within the internal energy market and we don't listen to the usual climate change denial claptrap of UKIP. Outside of the internal energy market, the UK will lag behind our 27 neighbours. Not only is that bad for our environment, but for our industries and the sustainable green jobs of the future. Energy is not a commodity. It's a basic social right. So what is your vision, Theresa May? A United Kingdom that turns its back on the climate or a leader promoting jobs alongside our neighbours? Thank you. And now Mr. Gusmiuk. Dziękuję bardzo, Pani Przewodnicząca. President, uh, thank you very much. Uh, commissioners. I want to draw your attention to a very important thing, at least from the point of view of my country, Poland. According to the Commission's uh, criteria, countries which use uh, carbon uh, as a source of uh, energy will not be able to have uh, p uh, power markets, whereas uh, our treaties stipulate that member states have the right to shape their own uh, energy uh, uh, mixes, which now results in having an amendment stating that plants emitting less than 550 uh, uh, grams per kilowatt hour will be able to participate in this, uh, in this uh, uh, market. Now, uh, modern plants uh, emit uh, as much as 700 uh, kilograms, which means that uh, old uh, uh, plants will be excluded from this scheme, and having a, a transition period uh, for older plants uh, will not change much here. So adding this stipulation without having a proper in-depth uh, analysis of uh, possible consequences, this uh, means it was a political decision by the commissioners without analyzing what consequences it would have for countries such as Poland, whose uh, energy system is based on carbon. Mr. Madam President, commissioners, colleagues. Now, this is a very interesting proposal from the commission, a huge package maybe right now I don't think we can correctly assess all of the different elements in there but it's an attempt to be a little bit more pragmatic about this we want cheaper prices uh, we see uh, energy poverty as uh, a problem so we have to do something about it now we have to look at the effects on the climate as well and that means that we need an overall concept we have to uh, ensure that we do this and the various different measures obviously are connected one to another and uh, if emissions trading is such a central element, then our colleague Pieper is quite correct in that we have to take more attention uh, of the kind of effect we're going to have with the other measures as well. There are some interesting prompts, for example, this question uh, about the, uh, um, the uh, uh, access for renewables as well. But the devil is in the detail there. There are points which require more intense discussion and uh, I do believe that uh, uh, we need to uh, extend this. We need a European central uh, body with adequate competences. And obviously the cooperation of the various different uh, national 
institutions which exist has to be improved. It's much more about uh, practical issues and uh, uh, accelerating networking. I don't see any clear answers to that type of thing. And not, last but not least, um, what always happens in the Parliament, uh, more and more targets, faster targets, etc. That competition isn't going to take us anywhere. We need practical solutions in order to make headway. Our priority uh, for building an optimal energy union should be energy security, fighting energy poverty, modernizing our uh, production and uh, transport infrastructure, and a better use of existing energy sources. We need to better use also clean carbon when you uh, have no other sources of energy. All this is required to uh, reduce our dependency on uh, imports of energy. Another necessary component of our energy union would be thermal isolation, insulation of our buildings. We also uh, need support for network production of uh, uh, heat, of heating uh, systems. We cannot have we may not have decarbonization by way of bureaucratic fiat and unrealistic uh, limits. No, we need to boost our effectiveness. Thank you very much. President, ladies and gentlemen, the uh, clean energy for all package uh, is fraught with certain reservations and doubts. The first uh, item is the list of criteria for member states uh, to have power markets. According to treaty stipulations, dear Commissioner, each and every member state has the right to freely shape its own energy mix. Unfortunately, the Commission's proposal excludes the use of carbon for building uh, power markets, which will see Poland's energy security diminish. Now, the Commission uh, sees itself in the role of a creator of uh, energy policy, which means usurping the powers of the Council. Previously, heads of states uh, agreed that the EU would uh, uh, try to limit the use of energy by 20% until 2030. Without any legal base whatsoever, the Commission now has changed uh, those objectives, turns uh, them into legally binding objectives and uh, uh, sets the objective at the level of 30%. Thank you very much. And now Mr. Kelly. Dear Gamagru, John, having had the privilege of representing the Parliament in Paris, in Marrakesh, at the two COPs, I welcome the introductory remarks by the Commissioners and look forward to working with them as we move towards our ambition of a low carbon economy. I want to use my time to focus on the proposal on the energy performance of buildings, which is an area that I have a keen interest in and in which I see significant potential. Big improvements are needed in Europe's buildings, 75% of which are con currently considered to be inefficient. Buildings account for 40% of final energy consumption in Europe, and an enormous amount of this is wasted due to buildings not performing efficiently. Our work in the coming months needs to ensure that we set the right framework to make investment into energy efficient projects in buildings happen, and I look forward to that challenge. I welcome the mandatory minimum requirements for renewable energy in new buildings and in buildings undertaking major renovations. This, along with a more ambitious energy efficient target of 30%, will help to ensure real improvements in terms of energy use in our buildings. Efficient homes mean less energy consumption, lower bills, and a lower carbon footprint. It is a true no brainer, and I look forward to working on the proposal in the coming months. I, key, I feel the key challenge in making the required improvements is mobilising the investment to bring about the required changes. The new initiative to unlock £10 billion in public and private funding for energy efficiency and renewable energy in buildings as announced in this package is welcome and will be a crucial part of this. And I also welcome the £400 million under the EIB FC fund for France. That can be emulated elsewhere. Thanks. And next one, Mr. Balcidis. Thank you, Madam Chair, esteemed Commissioner. Uh, let me join the choir of uh, congratulations uh, with this ambitious document. Um, for the first time, we have an ambitious plan which relies on digital technologies and renovations in order to achieve uh, modern, efficient, 
and uh, contemporary energy system. In Paris, we achieved a historical agreement uh, on climate change, and uh, therefore we must uh, maintain our leadership in this field. Uh, renewable and clean energy production is one of the best uh, ways towards the prospective future. We have too many uh, yet unexploited uh, opportunities in the field of uh, building renovation, and therefore the Commission could make certain steps uh, to really improve savings, and uh, that would lead, of course, to a less polluting economy. Also, that would be of a benefit to the most vulnerable groups of consumers. Uh, what is also important uh, that uh, uh, the creation of this energy system uh, would uh, uh, reduce uh, energy poverty and that would contribute, of course, to the benefit of the society. Thank you very much. In energy policy, you also and always have to take into account the context of a given country, its uh, GDP level, and only then you will have a, a, a policy based on solidarity and not socialism where you want to eliminate competition by way uh, of uh, bureaucratic decision. Elimination of carbon as, as, as an energy source will lead to a higher dependence on Russia, not only of Poland, but the whole of the EU. And if you fail to understand this, you should not take up any official posts. Let me also remind you Article 98 of the Treaty on the Functioning of the EU. This article from Maastricht stipulates that uh, Germany has the special uh, right to uh, offer public uh, uh, assistance to those parts uh, of Germany that was occupied by uh, the Soviet Union. And now the alleged uh, pretext of uh, uh, public uh, aid is used to limit the development of countries which were also occupied by the Soviet Union. Thank you very much, President. I think uh, that the package is ambitious enough. I think it's balanced and I think it's fair. And I think exaggerated uh, 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 requests aren't uh, uh, re realistic uh, because uh, we have to deal with the issues. And I don't think uh, there's any point in uh, throwing out the baby with the bathwater. Uh, I think uh, people have mentioned the positive and negative points. Perhaps I could just uh, run through a, a new uh, market. I think uh, the Commission is uh, uh, setting the right uh, guidelines for an internal market, uh, but uh, we do need the expansion of the network. I think that's something people have mentioned already. Uh, the uh, the, the uh, Commission is mentioning, mentioning pricing and uh, uh, that uh, uh, means a shift to supranational authorities, uh, and there, there's a question of uh, responsibility, liability. That could all be very uh, complex. Now, uh, capacity uh, markets, uh, they are to be uh, only a transitional measure, but uh, we'll have to see what the member states do with that. And then uh, with 550 milligrams, uh, for the level which is set for new vehicles is so high that it simply won't be able to be achieved. And uh, 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 that uh, will exclude all of these plants. And uh, the, the Commission is uh, foreseeing uh, uh, an extension in the scope of the ESA, and then there's the question of whether or not uh, uh, it will be possible to deal with overcapacity appropriately. Thank you. Blanco Lopez. Muchas gracias, señora. Thank you, Madam President. This is a great opportunity. Transition to clean energy is something we need environmentally, and it's an opportunity for uh, empl employment and, and uh, economic growth. We need a more transparent market which provides affordable prices and allows us to meet our targets and which overcomes the isolation that the Iberian Peninsula is facing. We need to boost transition towards a model based on renewable energies which uh, boosts self-consumption and which improves energy efficiency. And as socialists, but also as people, we demand determined action against energy poverty. We've got 50 million Europeans and 5 million 
Spaniards who are awaiting an answer to this challenge. Citizens must be at the centre of this uh, new European Energy Policy Commissioners. Thank you very much indeed, Madam President. And I'd like to thank the Commission for having presented this package. It's um, very comprehensive legislation, probably the most important package in this Parliament. Obviously, energy policy is going to have a direct uh, effect on our security policy and security of supply because we are increasingly dependent on uh, gas from Putin's um, Russia and oil from the Middle and Near East and our decisions also will affect the climate and the environment. Better use of European energy will also reduce the dependency on third countries and uh, the the less we will be influenced by disturbances elsewhere. It's good to focus on energy efficiency as well. 30% should be achievable. Uh, it talks about that involves a lot of jobs as well on uh, um, renewables and energy efficiency. It affects various different spheres of work. And obviously, um, the broader perspective as well is uh, uh, digitalization, training, etc. That has to be taken into account as well. It means that a lot of money will remain in Europe and be used there instead of uh, being sent out to Russia and elsewhere. Thank you. Yeah, let me start by thanking Vice President Safkovic and Commissioner Kanieta for delivering this winter package as promised. As representatives of our citizens across the EU, we need to answer to our cost constituents cause when they ask from us policies that will deliver better air quality and cleaner energy. I believe that this package introduces significant improvements in energy efficiency, which, if properly carried out, can lift people out of energy poverty, cut greenhouse gas emissions and create jobs. Energy efficiency comes first and rightly so. On the other hand, however, we need to make sure that renewable targets can actually deliver the results we want and do not slow down the momentum reached during COP21. The shift away from coal power plants needs to be concretely encouraged and the no loopholes should remain open to subsidize the use of coal for power generation or to subsidize high polluting fossil fuels. The technology and the solutions are there and we need to make sure that we deliver a package that will seriously tackle climate change in the decades to come. This is once again our opportunity to rise to the occasion and move away from fancy words to concrete action which continues to build on the Paris Agreement. Thank you. And next one, Mr. Lies. Thank you very much, President. I would like uh, to uh, congratulate the Commission on uh, the winter package, uh, particularly for the part on uh, energy efficiency. I think uh, that the Commission really has made energy efficiency a priority. It's not just uh, something which is including it in a, a, a theoretical paper. It, there are very specific measures here, and that's something that we let. This really is a vital part of energy policy, and I'd like to pick up what uh, Mr. Benson has just said. If we invest in energy efficiency, then we can uh, save a lot of money on uh, fossil fuels, uh, 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 a billion euros are being transferred to Russia and uh, to uh, uh, Saudi Arabia. And if we can invest this in Europe and in European uh, um, workers, um, then that would be a better investment. Uh, but I have one question, and I'd really like us to work together towards an answer for this question. Uh, we've got a, a binding target of 27 percent, but I'm not sure exactly how we're going uh, to achieve this target. I think for uh, energy efficiency it's clear, but for renewables I'm not so sure. And I think uh, that the countries that are investing in renewables, if uh, we, we uh, miss the target, I think uh, we need to give recognition to the countries that have made the investment. Um, and they really need recognition for this. And I think uh, it would be good if we could work across the groups uh, to support this. 
Ja seuraavana Kumpula Natri, mutta sitä en ilmoitan, että jo keskustelu. Next, Miss Kumpula Natri, but as I said earlier, we will not be accepting any more blue cards. Miss Kumpula Natri, the floor is yours. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, this proposal will limit overall cost of decarbonisation challenge, which is very important, and especially we can read it in the energy efficiency. It is the best example how actions will soon be paid back. Commission aims to eliminate also artificial bottlenecks will facilitate investments and lead to better function of the regional and European electricity markets. Decarbonisation of the transport section is strongly present. Um, in the long run, the electric vehicles will be in the mainstream of personal transport, so it is important to lay down the foundations of this, this transition already today. Um, but we will need to deliver right away too. I will thank the Commission. It has given the proposal to substitute fossil fuels with the sustainable biofuels. Uh, but I would like to, because uh, I know that many, many Europeans will drive the liquid fuels for decades, but this proposal is not coherent, and I think we will need to look at the coherence of the policies on the biofuels in the future months. And now, Mr. Lewandowski. Pani President, Commissar. Uh, President, Commissioners, I understand the intention uh, of the Commission. It is an attempt to find a solution to make uh, the EU economy competitive in the face of inevitable changes in technology and energy. And this transformation must lead towards clean energy. And a strong point of this uh, proposal is to make uh, green energy more market competitive. Renewable uh, energy sources have lost their priority as regards access to networks. But uh, your uh, foundation, uh, your presumption is too uh, optimistic, uh, namely that we can uh, boost uh, EU GDP uh, by 1%. Why? Because you seem to be ignoring uh, the differences between the member states which are well known. This is not a proposal which is... Uh, technologically neutral, which you know very well, which then means you are trying to interfere with member states' energy mix, which should be their sovereign prerogative. From the point of view of Poland, uh, we have limits that would uh, in entirely exclude carbon from the uh, power markets. Your limit of 550 grams of CO2 per one kilowatt hour. This excludes public aid also in our energy system which is based on clean carbon or goes towards clean carbon and for us this is the only possible of, uh, of achieving our objectives thank you as your communication says cheaper energy is the energy we don't consume and the key to that apparent um, paradox is energy efficiency uh, which I see as crucial together with renewables. It's important for our consumers with their energy bills, also for the environment, for their health. Yes, clean air. Think what's happening in certain European cities where you can't breathe the air these days. This is a huge, fantastic opportunity for industry as well. But we have to work in an integrated fashion and I therefore formally invite the Commission to work in a more coordinated way with the Commissioners for Budget, Innovation and Industry because energy efficiency first and foremost means support for research in the environment and in technology, also in transport, su supporting new companies, startups which can come into to being with these uh, initiatives, to be more intelligent and flexible in, uh, these, on these products for their own, own production and distribution on the markets, and preparing also the necessary competencies for this. We all know that in this sector in Europe, Europe could be hugely competitive and uh, provide industrial leadership. Madam President, the European energy market should be based on healthy open competition. There should be good conditions for renewables. We need a mechanism 
to ensure that various sources of energy can compete fully and play the role they should. The European energy market should also involve close cooperation between countries with the development of connections, cross-border connections between countries. The Commission has also referred to this in the report, that that's the way to build such a market. And we won't achieve that unless we take certain measures. This is a project with a political purpose which has uh, a European aspect. It's a part of building Europe. So it's a political project. It has a commercial aspect but that should not take precedence. And what we have to ensure is that the market should work and that there is no dominance of either private or public bodies which uh, gain a hegemony. Thank you very much, Madam President. The price of gas has uh, dropped by 40 percent, but the Hungarian government has only uh, decreased prices uh, by 10 percent. What happened to the other 30 percent? Uh, they went into the government's pocket or did it go into the pockets of people who are close to government in Hungary? Uh, prices haven't really dropped in Hungary and every time uh, that we talk about the drop in prices the Hungarian uh, government says uh, that this is an attack against Hungary by Brussels but in fact in Hungary the price of uh, gas uh, is continually increasing, not dropping. And so, uh, uh, well, what is the problem? The problem is that we have corruption and uh, we're not able to fight against that corruption and uh, the government is using all of the instruments possible uh, to increase the price of uh, gas and I would ask you to intervene. Monsieur le Commissaire, Commissioner, my colleagues have already called for more ambition from your part with uh, more binding objectives at a higher level on the three main parameters in your package, the uh, greenhouse gas emissions, energy efficiency and renewables and I would sign up to that as well. We also need exhaustivity and uh, consistency. Some people are rather uh, uh, afraid that these mechanisms will subsidize fossil fuels. So how can you reconcile energy security and lower CO2 emissions? What do you suggest to relaunch emissions and uh, have energy efficiency in uh, uh, electri electricity consuming industries? You I think really didn't say an awful lot about energy uh, precariousness, saying that this was a genuinely European issue. But there's no waving of the magic wand to get rid of the uh, Europeans, millions of them who are victims of all of this. There's a long path ahead of us. You also seem to be inspiring, uh, drawing on the uh, energy, the European semester for your governance sector and uh, uh, how are you going to make this then a genuinely democratic uh, exercise with the political debate on joint energy policies? Thank you. A step forward in achieving the energy union needs to help to save the European project. This is the kind of project that the union needs. These are things that allow us to lead in the future and get rid of the ghosts of the past. The targets are ambitious. 50% of electricity consumed in the EU will come from clean energies and renewable energies by 2030. 
there will be net additional investment of 177 billion euros uh, per year between 2021 and 2030, 900,000 new jobs. Uh, these are numbers which must be translated into reality, but we shouldn't let ourselves be dazzled by them. We have to take advantage of this opportunity to modernize the market, make it more transparent, make it more efficient, make it, more f make it fairer. We need to improve interconnections and regulation, develop uh, generation processes, create uh, more smarter networks, uh, combat regional imbalances, ensure competitiveness of industry and services, guarantee free access to electricity and to reduce energy poverty. This is an agenda that we cannot fail on. Thank you. Next speaker for one minute, Jeppe Kofod. And Mr. Commissioners, let me start by congratulating you and indeed the whole of the Commission on this very impressive winter package with real European value, a good starting point, but I also think we need to raise our ambitions. And let me give a few brief examples. When I read the proposal from the Commission on ASA, I see words as may and recommend. But if we want a truly interconnected and sustainable European energy market that effectively does away with transmission bottlenecks, those words must be changed to shall and decide in a number of places. Europe needs an energy regulator. We need a much stronger ASA with real competences. On renewables, we remain embarrassingly, embarrassingly close to Commission's own doing nothing scenario. I will quote once again Commissioner President Juncker, who said that Europe should be number one in renewables. So let's beef up our ambition as well at that point. But we are ready to work with you. It's a good starting point, but we need more ambition. Thank you so much. Thank you. And now for one minute, Simone Bonafé. Thank you, President. The proposals on the table generally meet the need to have a transition to a sustainable system, uh, low CO2 emissions and security of supply, and benefits for the environment and consumers, the health of our citizens, and also the competitiveness of our system. But uh, Renewables in 2015 uh, attracted more than 300 million euros investment and uh, that gives a competitive edge in Europe. So we welcome the uh, proposals on uh, uh, green energy, but I'd like to stress the concerns we have about the, the uh, uh, forecasts for renewables. 27% is still the target and a series of uh, um, pro-renewable initiatives have been removed and we're still focusing on uh, fossil fuels, coal in particular. We have to decide where we want to go, where we're going to place the resources. That's crucial. And let me be clear, clear about this. We cannot, uh, you know, we're not making headway and at the same time we are dragging our feet in respect to what we've done thus far. Thank you. Uh, for one minute. Thank you. One minute, Nicolas B. Je comprends que les I understand uh, uh, that our elites like uh, wind energy who like uh, uh, hot air, uh, but we do have to take into account uh, the uh, impact of these 21st century windmills uh, on our environment. I'm thinking of the, uh, the use of uh, rare uh, earths, which is particularly polluting, and uh, ask our fishermen what they think about these offshore turbines. Uh, maintenance costs are very high. And uh, it's not really beneficial for our economy because uh, the uh, construction is mainly done by Chinese companies. But uh, wind turbines are disfiguring our landscapes. And uh, it, it's um, a, a, a poor uh, greeting, uh, which is actually uh, undermining our, um, the uh, heritage of our buildings, wanting to guarantee that they're energy efficient. and. Uh, we see uh, subsidies willy-nilly, and so I think it is important, actually, that we invest in other uh, uh, types of energy, like Normandy Hydro, and uh, 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 this is one of the primary sources of uh, uh, renewable energy. We need to... Uh, uh, you have to stick to your speaking time, I'm afraid. Um, I have many more colleagues um, than I could possibly allow, so I will try to strike a balance, but please uh, don't be too disappointed if you're not uh, among those called upon. The first speaker is for one minute, Mariana, Mariana uh, Petir. 
President, uh, Commissioners, the Commission's proposal for clean energy for all Europeans reflects the fact that the transition to clean energy is a growth sector for the future and an opportunity for smart investors. This package means that by 2021, public and private investments amounting to 177 billion euros per year will be mobilized. In the next 10 years, the GDP can grow by 1% and uh, 900,000 new jobs can be created. Every day, Europe imports energy to the tune of 1 billion euros. Investing in energy efficiency reduces the need to produce energy. By investing in efficiency, we will invest in the European economy, in our home, in our industry, our SMEs who will renovate our homes. It's better to spend a billion euros a day in our economy than pay for energy from abroad. It's it's also necessary to use better the potential of biomass and biofuel uh, based on uh, 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 management of these resources, and Europe does well there. Thank you. Thank you. Nicola Caputo, one minute. Ah. Herr Caputo is not there. Apparently, Mr. Caputo is not in the hemicycle, so Diego Sani for one minute. Thank you very much indeed, uh, President. Colleagues, the biofuels component in this package, I do understand, encourages the use of renewables, but first generation fuels, I would say, are also of use and their drop in the rate of uh, these energies will I don't think have any positive consequences beyond uh, 500 kilometers of uh, transport these fuels are not viable because they produce high levels of pollution We could produce biofuels. Sani, jetzt spricht für. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, Javier Benitos de Luaga, now for one minute. Gracias, señor presidente. Thank you, president, and good morning, Mr. Arias Cañete, Mr. Sefcovic. It's <coughs> great that you have come to the plenary to debate on the winter package because you want to put citizens at the heart of energy, but what you're putting at its heart is fossil fuels. Uh, you know people by their deeds, not by their words. It's good that you're explaining why you're proposing contradictory mechanisms, mechanisms of capacity, which are really subsidies for fossil fuels. 95% of uh, EU coal plants will receive millions and by until uh, 2026 and then uh, energy efficiency is insufficient we should achieve 40 percent binding and with no uh, loopholes to uh, improve things and reduce energy poverty these are contradictory measures and insufficient to achieve the objectives of Paris. They're actually uh, designed to uh, keep the power of the fossil lobbies. Thank you. Kunnen, for one minute, please. Kiitos, arvoisa puhemies. Thank you, Mr. President. I would like to congratulate the Commission on their energy package, which is mainly good, a very good and balanced whole. We are committed to reducing our emissions in Europe, and it is important that it be done very cost-effectively and uh, in a very market-oriented manner. Energy efficiency plays a huge role here. We know that in many member states we can improve energy efficiency in a very cost-effective cost manner. I wanted to mention two things in this package in particular. One has to do with renewable energy and in supporting this. It is natural that we have to support renewables very forcefully in the beginning, but we have to reach a situation where we do all this in a market-oriented manner. We cannot have a long-lasting product, production supports for renewables. 
The other thing is cutting the emissions in transport. It is good that the Commission is taking steps into this direction, but we still have a lot more ambition that could be put into into these targets. I think Europe could be a leader here. Thank you. Vielen Dank. Und Thank you. And the last speaker now under the Catch the Eye, Notis Maria, for one minute. Thank you, President. Liberalisation of the energy market in the EU has to go hand in hand with uh, uh, tighter security provisions as well to avoid the type of uh, accident we can have with the provision of natural gas. Uh, Mr. Sekovic, the Commission should check the security rules for installations which provide natural gas from the grid right through to the households in the various different EU member states. The EU should also develop renewable forms of energy uh, and strengthen the energy policies of member states, at the same time also taking measures to uh, combat energy poverty. Because of the memoranda and the austerity policies in uh, uh, Greece, 90% of households are unable to heat their homes because of the high cost of heating oil. But the Commission has ignored the fact that uh, the uh, um, tax rates on in Greece could be reduced. So why aren't you doing something about that? Why are you leaving the Greek population to freeze? Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, now, uh, to reply on behalf of the Commission, I have here two Commissioners. I would ask uh, the two of you to decide who takes the floor. Thank you very much. Senor Canete. Thank you, President. Honourable Members, let me thank all of you for your thoughts and comments on the clean energy for all European packages. The Commission has been very attentive to the proposals made by this House when preparing the legislative measures included in the package. Many of the views, suggestions and demands made by the House have been incorporated in the package and are reflected in the pages of the legislative proposals. I am aware that on some issues this House has advocated for slightly different positions than the one the Commission has put forward in this proposal. So allow me to emphasize this. The Commission proposals are neither soft nor easy targets. They will require considerable efforts by member states to meet their international domestic obligations. And to get them right, we have assessed our proposals along several dimensions, including energy system impacts, macroeconomic impacts, environmental effects and health impacts, social impacts, including affordability issues, energy-related investments, and finally, energy system costs. And of course, our proposals fully respect the right of member states to choose their energy mix, as stated in Article 194, of the treaties. Many of you have referred to renewable energy. The Renewable Energy Directive revised proposal is ambitious and improves the previous directive, in particular putting an end to retroactive measures and launching a Europeanization process. But the measures favoring renewables go beyond this text, because the market design, energy efficiency, energy performance of buildings, and the governance of the energy union, all of them contribute to reaching our policy goals and targets in a cost-effective way paving the way for further renewables deployment in buildings, transport and industry. The revised proposal goes also beyond reaching the at least 27 per cent target. It's about bringing sustainable jobs in the market, creating local added value, unlocking the investment potential and fostering innovation. And the at least 27 per cent target represents the cost optimal contribution of renewables in 2030 towards meeting the European Union long term decarbonisation objectives. And it reflects the European Union fair and ambitious contribution to the Paris Agreement. The package proposes also for the first time a clear framework on cell consumption and production, energy communities and demand response. And this will help drive the energy transition by unlocking private capital for investment in renewables and make the electricity system more flexible in order to help renewable integration. Also, the European Union binding 30 per cent energy efficiency target for 2030 is ambitious but balanced and is coherent with other targets of the 2030 framework for energy and climate. And it is also the target that Vice President Serkovic and myself, we promised during our hearings two years ago and, and this, and, and, uh, to the European Parliament, and this is what we have delivered. We are going beyond what, strictly speaking, would be necessary to ensure that the at least 40 per cent target for greenhouse gas reductions is met. And any claim that our targets and proposals are insufficient to honour our commitment under the Paris Agreement is simply wrong. With this package, we will take the decisive step forward to ensure that the energy transition will continue and that the targets agreed upon 
will be met. For sure, a lot of real political engagement will be needed in both the European Parliament and the Council to reach a compromise. And I count on you to improve them and make them a reality soon for the benefit of all our citizens. Thank you, President. If you allow me, Mr. President. To, to thank uh, honourable members for the, what I feel was a general support for the package and I want to assure you that we also carefully listened to the critical remarks, also uh, to the calls for the, for the more ambitions and we are very much ready to work very closely with you on this package. Just to complement uh, Miguel's remark on the energy poverty. I think it's very important that uh, we clearly recognise the energy po poverty as an important challenge uh, in our package and uh, we recognize it as a very important challenge which we have to tackle together with the member state. But we want to make our utmost on the European level. We are addressing the energy uh, poverty issue in our governance system. We want to make sure that also in uh, the renovations, uh, the issues of the social housing and the long-term renovation plans have clearly uh, factor in also the issue of energy poverty. Miguel was uh, elaborating on the importance of energy efficiency and we see it as a very strong instrument how we can tackle energy poverty as well. And in electricity market design we are proposing a clear procedure which would prevent uh, the people from unfair uh, disconnections. Not speaking about eco-design and energy labelling where already today our citizens are saving hundreds of uh, euros thanks to our efficient electric appliances. Uh, I also would like to react to one remark and uh, express the support of the Commission for, for all those who are pushing for the completion of internal energy market in a prompt and a smart way. I think a lot of positive thing is happening in Baltic and uh, Nordic countries. We see positive developments in Southeast Europe through our KESEC uh, initiative and I would like to assure you that we are bringing new dynamism to how we manage our project of a common interest and we are also encouraging the member states to present more projects uh, in the area of the smart grids. So to conclude, I really would like to thank all the members who recognize the high ambition level uh, of this proposal. It's truly transformational nature which should deliver the most significant modernization of our energy systems since they have been built in Europe. So I welcome your readiness to work hard on this package. It's on the priority action list for the next year. So I believe that we can move from the year of delivery to the year of implementation. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Thank you very much, Vice President. Thank you, Commissioner. Damit ist die Aussprache zu diesem That completes the debate on this item of the agenda. Wir kommen dann which takes us to the next item on today's agenda. It was put on the agenda at the request of the plenary on Monday. And this is the report from my colleague Richard Corbett, the general revision of the Parliament's rules of procedure.